I just started reading it and I'm messing up their names already. Ah! I don't know, my <laughs> this tripod that I'm using is super slidey. It's me, Jess. How's everybody doing? I know that I haven't I haven't come on for a while. I it's been very tough. It's been a very March was not a kind month to me. It's been a very hard road, but I'm back here with my April TBR. So my April TBR is gonna look a little bit like my March TBR, just a little bit, um, because some of the books that I want to read in April were ones that I was not able to get to for March, sadly. So without any further ado, here is what I hope to read for April. I have nine books. Here's what started happening to me in March, is that I started to utilize my local library. And that meant that the TBR that I had put together of books that I own changed a little bit because it's really fun to walk into the library and just look at the shelf here in Montreal because we're in Quebec. They have a section that's an English section and then they have a section of new books from, for English speakers. And it's a bit surprising, but a lot of titles are there that you wouldn't expect to be there that people maybe in other parts of Canada have on hold. So it's very exciting. And I got to read a couple of the new releases that I really wanted to read in March and I will talk about those in my March wrap up. Uh, and I do have a book out from the library right now, which I just started, which I'm definitely gonna be reading in April. So I guess I'll put it on my TBR, but it does mean that my TBR is a little unreliable. I guess it's loosey goosey. Not that it wasn't before, but it's less reliable now because of these trips to the library. I'm even thinking about just doing one month exclusively books from the library, which is a great idea and also not a great idea because I have a lot of books on my shelves that I also want to get to. Anyhow, without further ado, let's get into the books. I guess I'll start with, well, I really want to start with the two that I... I'm prioritizing this month because I didn't, one of them was on my TBR for last month. Gosh, I hope both of them weren't. Um, I think one of them was on my TBR for March and I didn't get to it. And that was uh, Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. So if anybody has been keeping up with Canada Reads here in Canada, Scarborough almost made it to be the winner of Canada Reads. It was the second finalist or the second to last this the runner up to the final uh, and I still haven't gotten to it and I'm really I almost feel desperate to get to this book but I haven't cracked it open yet and I know that it's made and been made into a film so it'll be really fun to read the book and then watch the film this is a book about I think it's actually a coming of age story set in Scarborough Scarborough is a borough of Toronto and it's a really large uh, population. I don't know the size of the population of Scarborough, but it's a big uh, population and it's a very diverse population. And I think there's an exploration of that in this book. So I really want to make it to reading this one in April, prioritizing that one. And then the other one is Five Little Indians, which I haven't read yet by Michelle Good, which I talked about, I think, in a book haul, recent book haul, because I did purchase this recently. And this one won Canada Reads. And so, yeah, I think every year I'm gonna try to read the at least the winner of Canada Reads. If not, if I really get organized and I've <laughs> got time, it'd be fun to read all of the choices for Canada Reads, but that didn't happen this year. So this is actually a debut novel, so that's very exciting but it's I think it's going to be traumatic because it is about not personally traumatic for me but it involves trauma for First Nations community because it is an exploration of the residential school survivors I think and the experience maybe of being in residential schools I actually don't know a lot about it I haven't been listening to the Canada Reads on the radio I haven't been listening to the debates because I didn't want to know too much about the books because I want to read them myself and it's not that I'm opposed to spoilers I just like to go in kind of 
cold. Anyway, I think this is going to be a difficult read, but an important read, and I'm really looking forward to it. Nola is scratching, as usual. Nola, do you think maybe you could get a toy or something? Because that's very irritating. I don't know why it is that as soon as I start filming, the dogs decide, especially the younger dog, decides to get crazy. Oh yeah, I had COVID, everyone. <laughs> It's like I like at the last person to get on the COVID train is me, I feel like. And it kind of knocked me down. It knocked me down and it pinned me down for like a week. So yeah, I was sick, pretty sick for a while there. Okay, so let me talk about the library book that I took out, which I'm excited about. This is actually the third library book I've taken out in the past few weeks. Uh, I'll talk about the other ones when I do my March wrap up, but this is Bullet Train by Kotaro Isaka. Uh, soon to be a major motion picture starring Brad Pitt, everybody. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it gets adapted, but uh, this was re recommended to me by Kate File. I'm, not, I'm never sure if I'm saying her name correctly, which is, she has a YouTube channel that my daughter introduced me to, and she's great. I'll link her channel below. But she was talking about this being a really great kind of page turner thriller mystery. I don't know how it's dubbed if it's a thriller or a mystery, but okay, so it takes place on a train. So it's a little bit like a locked box mystery thriller, locked room mystery, locked box mysteries. So, yes, this is like a, a clo enclosed space mystery. I'm sure there's another word for it. Uh, it all takes place on a train. So we have this kind of wide range of different characters. Some of them are working for the mafia, some of them are royalty, like it's a weird mix of characters. And the question is, who will make it off the train alive? Uh, I just started it and so far it's a little bit of a slow start, which feels right because it's translated from Japanese and that feels right for a Japanese thriller. And I'm excited to read it. I'm looking forward to reading it because I've heard a lot of good things about it. Like I said, Kate really had a lot of positive things to say about it. So I'm hoping to get to know the characters on the train and I hope that it's a good balance of action and character building and mystery and thrillers so that it's a, uh, entertaining. And I, I did get quite a few books over the month of March. Actually, my birthday was in March. Man, possibly the worst birthday of my life. My birthday was March 26th, and I want to say that I got lots of books for my birthday, but I didn't get any books for my birthday. <laughs> but I did buy some books, so I will do, I will we'll be doing another haul probably in April, like around Easter time, when all of my gifts come in. Some of them are coming in the mail. But this is, this will be in that haul, but I've already decided to start reading it, The Other Black Girl. And I got the UK cover because I just really prefer the UK cover. I just think it's so cool with the broken comb and the yellow and the black. I just love this cover. And this is another thriller. It's written by Zakia Dalila, Zakia Dalila Harris. And it's interesting because she worked, look how gorgeous this woman is. She worked in publishing and it's about the publishing industry and it's about this woman, Nella, who's working in for a small publishing company and another woman and she's the only black wo woman at this publishing firm and another woman is hired so hazel is hired at the same firm which at first seems like a great development for nella and her work life and she's excited to have this other woman, this other black woman at the company to help advance the status of black women and black writers and black equity in the workplace. I think things go sideways. I think the other, the other black woman, Hazel, turns out to be not quite the ally that Nella was hoping she would be. So I've heard this is really good and I'm very excited that it came and I'm very excited to read it. What does it says on the back? Something like Devil Wears Prada but with racism and privilege or something. Yes, I actually already started reading that one and I already started reading Bullet Train. So those for sure, those four are like definite definites for me. And then there were quite a few that I didn't get to in March that I had hoped. I mean, I had 16 books on my TBR for March. What was I thinking? 
everybody knew it when they watched that I think I think people even wrote in the comments like 16 books that's a bit ambitious and I'm like yeah that's my story of my life like I have no life ambition anymore but when it comes to reading books I have a lot of ambition so open water was on my TBR I feel like maybe it's been on two TBRs but it was definitely on my TBR for last month and I really want to get to it this month it's a love story and it's written from it's written in the second person and it's apparently very beautiful so really hoping to get to that this month um, so we're just trying to grab things that were on my TBR. I think that was it for my TBR. I think I need to read Jane Eyre, but I don't have it on my TBR for this month, but it's definitely on my list for this year because a couple of the books that I read in March were referencing Jane Eyre like crazy. And I was almost losing my mind a little bit because I was like, I haven't read it yet. Please don't spoil it for me. So yeah, I think I just have to read it because apparently everything references Jane Eyre. I don't know. I'm going through a little bit of like a midlife crisis. I'm thinking about like a little Botox here. I was going on in one video about how much I love my frown lines, but now I'm like, you know, little of this, little of this. And they do something where you, they make it look like you are wearing like a permanent ponytail. I'm down. Uh, so on my TBR for March, I had The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, and I've heard really mixed reviews on it. And so I thought what I would prefer to do, and since I didn't get to it in March, what I would prefer to do is to read the book that everyone loved by Lucy Foley called The Guest List. And I just happen to have a copy. It doesn't have the cover. It's a hardback and it doesn't have the cover on it. I picked it up at a, a Goodwill store here in Montreal. But I think I'm going to start with it and then read The Paris Apartment because I don't really want my introduction to Lucy Foley to be negative. And like I said, I think there's been some mixed reviews of The Paris Apartment. In this one, I think it's, a, a, again, I think it's a lockbox, closed room, closed in, cl enclosed space mystery I guess originally made famous by and I, I think this is based on I could be wrong but I think this is based on Agatha Christie's and then there were none which I read and is just thoroughly genius I love it so much that was such a good book but I guess this might be kind of loosely based on that I'm not sure I think it's a, a group of different people coming coming to an event a wedding um, I'm assuming someone dies so I'm looking forward to reading it and reading the first Lucy Foley. That seems like a good one, a good place to go. And already I might, that might be all I get to, but if I could get to a few more, I would really like to read a couple of books in honor of recognizing Asian authors. This book I picked up in a recent book haul, um, My Year Abroad. It's about an entrepreneur, uh, business, young businessman, and his partner I think traveling across China and just the kinds of adventures they get into pursuing their businesses. It says darkly comic suspenseful and crackling with satirical commentary which is right up my alley by Chang Rei Li. Uh, I really like to get to this one. It's a bit long. It's almost 500 pages but I'd really like to get to this one in April and I would like to have at least one Asian author well, I have the Japanese bullet train, so that would be the second Asian author. And then I've had this on my physical TBR for like forever. This won the Man Booker Prize in 2008 and I've never read it. The White Tiger, and I had it on my April TBR last year and I didn't get to it and it was for the Asian uh, reading challenge or readathon. And I'd like to try to read it this year. This is about, this is in an in Indian, I think it's set in India. And I think it's about, a murder. A man who's a murderer. It says, over the course of seven nights, Balram tells us the terrible and transfixing story of how he came to be a success in life, having nothing but his own wits to help him along. And I guess along the way he murders someone. So I've heard it's really good and I would like to get to it as well. That's eight books and that seems like enough. But let's just say... Let's just say I need to read another book and I don't find anything at the library. Another one that I was hoping to get to this spring is Liberty. I bought this last summer and I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I would like to get to it so I'll add it to the TBR but the chances of my getting to it are probably low and I don't know I might there are other ones that might take precedence but I might end up turning to this one so I like to have more on my TBR sometimes just to have a bit of variety. There are books that were on my TBR from last 
month that I thought about bringing forward to this month, but I think I'm just gonna play it by ear a little bit more this month. So Liberty is a debut novel. No, it's not a debut novel. She wrote, We Love You, Charlie Freeman, which I've never heard of. And she won the Whitting Award for that book. But this is a story about a young black girl's attempt to find a place where she can be fully and only herself. It's a coming of age story of a free born black girl in Reconstruction era Brooklyn. And uh, that's all I'm going to read from it. I've heard it's really good. It's been nominated for a few different prizes and I would really like to get to that. So those are the nine books on my TBR for April. Um, like I said, it's been a tough tough March. Hopefully April will be better. And But I think it's going to be really hard for a while. So I'm going to do my best to keep filming videos and posting videos. I know there are some people who are like new to my channel and they kind of came along at this point where things kind of went south for me personally. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you like my channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, <clears throat> tell some other people about it. And I will be back this week or this coming weekend, I hope, with my wrap up and another book haul at some point in April. And I hope you all are doing well. Let me know what you're reading in the comments below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and if you have anything to say about them. And I hope you have a great reading month. Love you guys. Bye. It, there's not much on the back. It just uh, guys, please. Is that, the, is that what they, they call it? A lockbox mystery? An open box mystery? What is it called? Uh, like an enclosed space mystery? Maybe I should feed them. Okay, I think that actually helped the situation. Okay.